Well, appreciate you being here uh, Wednesday afternoon. You can see that we've been joined by Dr. Eichel and part of his team, whom he will introduce in just a moment. My remarks really are brief today. There has not been a whole lot of, well, there's been a lot of change in the last 24 hours, uh, but there's not been uh, many points of, I would call, special interest. Before I make some remarks about where we stand on testing, I want to point out that, that uh, there's a tremendous amount of recognition, I think, in the community that we sh that should be expressed to all of our healthcare workers. I mean, our hospital uh, employees, our doctors, doctors' offices, and all they they deserve a huge. Uh, if we were in an audience, I'd ask you for a round of applause for them or a standing ovation because. You know, they're really just getting going now, and they're really doing a good job, and we're tremendously grateful for that. But I'd be remiss if I didn't say something about the people working in our grocery stores uh, and the supply chain that's keeping things going. So, you know, all that is, is working. I think it will continue to work in a, in a good fashion, and to the point where the city can support them, you know, we want to do those things. And that's exactly what the city is trying to do with the hospitals is to support their efforts in the testing. And I don't know, I'm, if you think about it, you will recall this, during the BP oil spill, as everybody was frantically trying to decide what to do, you know, we couldn't find the protective gear and we couldn't find the booms to float in the water and there were scrambling going on. Well, there's a lot of that same scrambling going on right now because we haven't dealt with this. So as, we, as plans change and evolve, I hope it doesn't give you the, uh, the send a message that we don't know what we're doing. It's we're trying to do the very best we can, uh, maybe on shifting sand or as circumstances change. And specifically, I would lead in by saying that to say this, that uh, it appears that to help the Mobile Infirmary to really assist them, that if we help them at their diagnostic and medical clinics, one on Spring Hill Avenue and one on Hillcrest Road, if we can help them with the traffic control, the tinning, and so forth there, it's going to be much better than us standing up at, at Brookley. And the reason is that they have x-ray equipment, they have other stuff that's in real close proximity for those locations. And so uh, 20 minutes ago, uh, Mark Nix and I decided that that was the best way for the city to assist them, and so that's how we'll do it. We we'll still have the other two sites that we have stood up uh, at at uh, Brook, excuse me, at uh, Ladd Stadium and the and the uh, at the grounds, and we're really waiting to see how we can best assist the University Hospital. And once we know that, we will fall in to help them because that's where the manpower is. That's where the tracking is going to be. So it's not uh, us trying to make them come to us. We're going to go to them so that they can be more effective and, and more efficient. I would also ask. Uh, I uh, made myself a note to remind you that there are a lot of things that government is doing and that we can do, but really at the end of the day, the most effective uh, tool toward uh, controlling this is having effective citizen response of you policing yourself. Now, one of the things we found out was, was that uh, sometimes that doesn't work so well, and that's why we have removed some of the goals, uh, the, the hoops from my basketball goals because we had locked some of the playgrounds because there were too many people crowding in those areas playing basketball and in an effort to control it but they had taken the locks off the gates we decided the best thing to do is take the hoops down until another point in time and that's just kind of the things that we will have to do in response to behavior that's not in accordance with what the CDC is saying. So at this time I would uh, turn it over to Dr. Isho for him to make a few brief remarks and for, um, for him to introduce his team and then after that we will answer questions and I will, uh, Dr. Ashill, I'll fill the uh, questions and I'll repeat them and then whichever one of us decides best uh, capable, we'll answer them that way, okay? Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Bert Ashill, on behalf of the Mobile County Health Department, I thank everyone for working hard and protecting their personal health and well-being. I also commend the mayor and his entire staff for all the many efforts that they're doing to help the citizens of Mobile, Alabama uh, have good outcomes with this pandemic. 
This is an unusual circumstance. The last pan worldwide pandemic was 1918. Uh, so we don't have a lot of personal experience, but history is giving us some insights of things to do. So again, I thank the mayor, his team, uh, and everyone. And I uh, ask tonight if everybody would please have a little moment of silence for some people in our country who paid the ultimate sacrifice uh, with this particular illness. COVID-19 uh, is unfortunately is taking lives in the United States of America. Uh, and uh, we're very fortunate right now, but Dr. Murphy, who was with the Center for Disease Control before she came to the Mobile County Health Department, will give you more information. Thank you. Hello everyone. Since I last spoke with you yesterday, the Alabama Department of Public Health has confirmed 283 cases of COVID-19 in Alabama residents. Um, no deaths so far that, that have been reported. Mobile County currently has 10 confirmed cases of COVID-19 disease in our Mobile County residents and we have no deaths. Um, as you know, the ADPH began updating their website to show the total number of tests conducted um, through the Bureau of Clinical Laboratories and also the commercial laboratories that are reporting test results to, to the State Health Department. So the state reports 2,812 total tested since we began in, in Mobile County, we know about 171 negative tests. So I just want to mention that. Also, ADPH, in addition to one or two of their information lines that they have had open, have established another. So for general COVID information, you can call 800-270-7268. For senior citizens, and that's not defined, so you can identify yourself, there's a special line for information for seniors at 877-425-2243. And then importantly, as you know, ADPH has been working with the Alabama Hospital Association to try to get as many as 25 testing sites statewide. There are currently two in Mobile County. You can find out their current location, operating hours, re requirements for screening by calling 888-264-2256. We really do encourage you. There is a map online now that shows the location of all of the testing sites around the state. We really encourage you to call that telephone number if you're ill and would, um, would like to see about getting testing someplace um, because they have the most up-to-date information as to where those, um, those sites are and what their testing ca capacity is at the time. I wanted just to remind you that a couple of days ago, the state health officer, Dr. Scott Harris, updated the criteria for testing. This is if you um, are tested through the state laboratory in Montgomery, you have to have illness of subjective or measured fever or shortness of breath or cough and be hospitalized, immunocompromised or have comorbidities, 65 years or older, a healthcare worker or associated with a long-term care facility. So at this time, again, we're really restricting, recommended restricting testing to just those patients who are sick and fit in some of those high risk categories. So please, if you are mildly ill and can stay at home and quarantine and manage your illness at home, please do so that, so that we can you know, save the supplies and keep loads down on our hospitals so that we can keep them operating safely and protect their staff. As you have heard, we continue to have shortages of the materials that are needed to safely collect specimens and submit them for testing. And again, you know, the, the short supplies that everyone is scrambling for are being directed to those areas in our country who have the greatest medical need, and we want to support that decision. One or two things else that I'll share with you. We've had one, a couple of people contact us to say, hey, my business isn't open and I have some protective per, personal protective equipment or maybe some hand sanitizer that I would like to donate to the cause, and we are very happy to talk with you about that. So if there are businesses out there who have restricted um, activities because they're not essential services and they've decided to um, sort of streamline or co consolidate activities and they have personal protective equipment or um, sanitizer that they want to donate, you can call the um, ESF 8 date at desk at the emergency management area agency, sorry, um, at 251-266-7515. Again, that's um, the ESF 8 or the Health 
care desk at our um, EMA location in Mobile at 251-266-7515. And we, we got a question um, from submitted earlier from some of our partners. One is asking about the cases, the 10 cases that we have in Mobile. Um, do we, are, we have investigators that are tracking the contacts to all of those cases, and we had some folks ask if we could give any information about where they were exposed, where they were potentially exposed. We know one or two of them had travel outside of the state. We're still investigating potential exposures for several other of our cases. We um, currently have um, no knowledge of any link to any cruise ship that might have been affected. Another is some confusion about um, results being released. So if you get tested, your provider who ordered that test and conducted that test has to provide that test result to you. The health department cannot provide you with that test result if you are not a Mobile County Health Department patient. So if you got tested at infirmary or university hospital or any other location, you have to get your test result from that, from that provider. Now, test results are reportable to the state health department, but that is not, is not for the purpose of contacting patients. That's for the purpose for conducting public health surveillance and investigation. I just want to clarify that because there's been some confusion. And statewide test results, particularly positive test results, are required by um, order to be reported to the Alabama Department of Public Health within four hours. So that's um, a couple of comments and clarifications on testing and our investigation. As we get more and more cases in Mobile over the coming weeks, and we expect there will be more, we will be able to provide more information to you on the characteristics of those cases. For example, we could provide to you a date, uh, an age range or an average age or what percent are male and female and what percent are hospitalized. But right now, because we have to protect um, their identity and their um, protected health information, we're not able to release any of that information. And thank you very much for our viewer who called to correct some misinformation that came from me recently about what the acronym HIPAA stands for. So um, I'll invite um, Kelly Warren, our Executive Director of Family Health, to the podium to remind everyone of our um, prevention measures. Good afternoon. I just want to remind everyone that even if you are sick, there are things you can do to help prevent transmission of the disease to people in your household and people you may be coming in contact with. So here are some tips. Stay home except to get medical care. Separate yourself from other people in your home. That's called home isolation. If you do need to go to your doctor, call ahead before you go. They're going to give you specific instructions as to what you need to do prior to entering their facility. Wear a face mask if you're sick. Cover your coughs and sneezes and immediately dispose of those tissues in, the, in a trash basket. Clean your hands often. Avoid sharing any personal household items with anyone uh, that's in the same vicinity as you. Clean all high touch surfaces every single day and monitor your symptoms. These are easy things that we can do just to make sure that those around you and those who may be helping you through this disease don't get sick as well. Thank you. Okay, questions? How is Mobile, uh, how are you guys helping Mobile and Infirmary? You said about 20 minutes ago you guys said, what was... Okay, the question is how, how is the City of Mobile helping the Mobile Infirmary? Yeah, you said you guys were... Correct, so what, I, what my comment was was that we have uh, jointly agreed uh, to partner with them in the testing that they're currently doing on Spring Hill Avenue, at 1700 Spring Hill Avenue, at the Diagnostic and Medical Clinic. We've already provided uh, barricades and some traffic control there. We will do the same thing at uh, Hillcrest Road and Airport Boulevard at their diagnostic and medical clinic on Hillcrest and we'll help them get, get that set up with the proper tinning and so forth. They will do all the testing. Okay? Should we come into some tests, you know, we will share those tests with the various hospitals, but they will be doing all the testing themselves. We're supply, supplying support only. That's correct. Yep. Was there was there a plan for another testing site that you guys are backing away from? 
mentioned something about uh, another third testing. Sorry. Yes, so what we're waiting to hear from is the university. The question was, are we backing away from some of the testing sites or creating another testing site? Well, obviously, today is the first time you've heard about the Hillcrest site. Uh, and we are waiting to hear from the university hospital as to how we can help them the most, whether it's to use the site at the grounds or at Ladd Stadium or to go to a, another location that of their choosing, somewhat like the infirmary has done. Um, and we'll just wait to hear from them to see what we can do to assist them. So instead of putting up your own site, you guys are assisting at the Hillcrest site instead, right? That, that, we're going to help, we're going to stand it up for, because they have proximity to their uh, other medical equipment there, x-rays and so forth, and their doctors are there. So the question is, what is the status with Synergy Labs? Uh, Synergy Labs had some, uh, the uh, serum test come in, the rapid serum test come in, but the hospitals are determining how to best use those. It's unlike the swab test, which everybody is used to, the rapid serum test is um, a little bit after the fact maybe. They think it's going to be helpful, but they're trying to determine the proper cr protocol. The hospitals are trying to determine the proper uh, protocol for using it. And so they're not there yet, but the test came in actually today. Yeah. In our area, I know we, we know one in Baldwin County is hospitalized, but do we have any that are seriously ill and that should be hospitalized here? Yeah, so the question is, are any of our 10 cases hospitalized? We know of two of those 10 that are hospitalized. Do you know how seriously, like ICU or things like that? No. I mean, I know, but I can't tell you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Okay. You, you, do you know some of that? You know some of that? Yes, I know some of it. He's taking off that after you. If you don't say it, I'll say it. So, um, so, so in Alabama, across Alabama, there are some 14,000 hospital beds. Um, the number of ventilators and um, isolation rooms in hospitals across the state is really some protected information. I've mentioned before that our healthcare coalition and Mobile, and also um, similar coalitions across the state, um, report to the state three times a day through the Alabama Incident Management System, the number of beds that are available in the different units, and also um, what services may, you know, what percent like of their ICU beds that are full, that sort of thing. So all of that information goes into the planning that is conducted um, with all of the folks that are gathered out at the Emergency Management Agency, both at the county level and at the state level. So can you guys tell us how many beds there are in Mobile County? I don't think so. Well, I think the hospital could if they wanted to, and I know, and I know, as a matter of fact, I know they can if they want to, but I think that well, where they're working on, they're working on a scorecard right now. It's evolving. It's not quite ready to turn on to the public, um, and it will reveal a lot of information that I think would be very interesting to the public. It's kind of still in a beta testing at this point in time. But well, going, going. Would, would, would rather not speculate on that because I think Dale that we'll know more of that information later and that was would we speculate on the uses the uses of beds in the hospitals so we're not going to speculate on that right now So um, the question is, don't we know earlier about cases um, before the 10 o'clock and the 4 o'clock um, public notice? We sometimes get notified of potential cases, well, we, we get them throughout the day. But the official case count will continue to be updated by Alabama at 10 and 4. They've been running a little bit late. Uh, we've been asking them if they can try to, you know, get, get that done on time because everyone is looking to that dashboard to update at 10 and 4 o'clock. 
I, I don't know what the number will be. I understand that the Mobile County Health Department and Jefferson County Health Departments can kind of go over the government's head, so, so to speak, and call for maybe a shelter in place ordinance or, or, or anything like that outside of what the governor might, might do. So the question or the, the comment is, is that you believe that the, the health departments uh, have the ability to go yeah. over the government and mandate certain things and I think that within certain um, limitations that they have the ability to declare certain issues, uh, certain emergencies. Would that be correct, Bert? Yeah. Um, I had a, a follow-up, but go ahead. Right. The, the actual is Title 22 of the Code of Alabama that creates public health and during certain emergencies, this is the first time I, in 30 years I've ever issued a health officer's order. Uh, and it's reserved for very, very important and grave situations that negatively impact the health and well-being. And it's also the power goes to the county health department, at Mobile County, Jefferson County Health Department, and the state health officer. There, there are two subparagraphs in it. There's an attorney general's opinion out that it is a valid law uh, and is rarely used. But this, these are the extenuating circumstances uh, where. Uh, public health uh, has legal authority to take certain actions. Would, are, what, at what point in this crisis, I mean we have 10 cases now, at what point in this crisis, what would be a tipping point for the health department to say, all right, we've got to do, we've got to take more extreme measures? I think we need to look back in the 1918 pandemic flu uh, that hit. In St. Louis, they Health Department made very aggressive uh, steps, limited schools, limited social gatherings, uh, and Baltimore did not. The difference in the death rate between the two sites uh, was uh, 1,700 uh, deaths uh, in St. Louis and 12,000 deaths in Philadelphia. So that is the precedence of when you know something bad's coming. And it was the idea that Philadelphia had welcoming the Doughboys home from the war and had hundreds of thousands of people on the street. It's very, very unusual that everybody uh, across the, the public health spectrum was concerned. And so people asked, why did we not do take the action we did before we had the first case? It's easier to keep the cow in the barn than it is to go chase the cow. And so we were trying to be proactive. The goal of public health is to prevent illness and the spread of disease. So just, to, just to clarify, could you guys call a shelter in place order if, if it got to that point? We do have the same authority that Jefferson County has. At this point in time, we are not considering uh, that. Uh, but it's, it's something that it's, it's a tool in the toolbox, but only used under dire circumstances. Uh, well, we have, to, well, we have to look at the numbers. So where we have the governor came back after we made uh, the 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 decision, uh, the governor then put the same rule across the entire state. We can look at other states that are like and similarly situated with us and look at the data, and only history is going to tell the the true story. Uh, I commend Mayor Stimson and his team because we've got to get this right the first time in order to protect lives of people in the city and support the health care industry. Do you expect that order to be concerned? Are you concerned about any orders that you have that you're acting on right now? I think the, I'm not going to, uh, the president uh, is the uh, president of the United States and uh, we are going to try to get people back uh, to the normal state as soon as we feel it's, it's health and safety. I would probably say based on data it will not be all of a sudden, you know, go back and do things. There will be probably a little caution of some social distancing as restaurants are opened at a later date and not have big gatherings. We're very fortunate this is not Mardi Gras and it's not football season.
that make up and decide at what point to assume you guys are probably on a issue one? So keep in mind that we've never been here before. And keep in mind that the, the data and the statistics for Mobile are not the same for they are, as they are for Birmingham. And so we will watch and observe what they're doing in other cities, watch what their trends are, we'll see where we are in Mobile, and we'll make the decision. But at this point in time, as Dr. Asho says, it seems to maybe be a bit premature you know, to just have uh, a, a stay in home um, order at this point in time. Is that okay? Pardon? I said one week later, are you satisfied with the work that Dr. Asho has done? So, and I think Dr. Asho expressed it exactly right about do we know if it's working? This will be one of those things that you'll never maybe be able to prove that it really worked, but. If we end up in three weeks from now, we've got 25 cases down here and everybody else got a whole bunch, we're going to wonder what did we do that allowed us to have so few cases other than maybe not testing. So we're going to do these things in the hope, and we believe there's science behind the social distancing, the washing the hands, but a lot of this you will not be able to prove that you did the exact right thing. I'm surprised I have you. No. I'm get, I get surprised all the time. Now, you know, I'd say that we all have to be a little bit surprised by that because, but we've never been here. You, everybody's used to the mayor declaring an, a state of emergency because it's usually natural disaster or some civil unrest. But it's very unusual to have had a health officer, you know, uh, issue an order like that. So I think it was surprising to, to everybody really. So not just me. Yeah. Surprising to me too. <laughs> this is for Dr. Murphy. Yeah. What's the number of uh, cases changed from 12 or 15 in the next 30 minutes? Since you just found out from those X number of cases, because we don't know the numbers, uh, what's the process for identifying the contacts? Does that change from what happened last week where you had the one case to now we have so many more of uh, trying to track those people down? Does this process just stop at a certain point once we have so many cases? Yeah, so the question is, um, at one, how long can the health department carry on case and contact investigations? Is there some um, um, benchmark for um, not being able to do that any longer and then just rely on community mitigation strategies? Right now, we're doing really well. Um, the, the folks that have been identified, many of them because of the community measures, you know, closing the schools and closing, you know, restaurants, those things, they have been at home and they have not been out around the community where they were potentially exposing a lot of people. And so the 10 cases that we have right now, it, the number of contacts around those cases um, is not in the hundreds, it's in the dozens. And so we will be able to um, monitor those folks for the 14 day period that they will be required to be quarantined and um, check their symptoms every day. If the cases that are identified continue to be similar to those where they have been adhering to the community mitigation measures that we've implemented, then we expect that we would be able to continue case and contact investigation for quite a while. Um, but that will, I think we'll know that number when we get there, but I don't think I can um, predict what that will be. What happens when we are when we are notified of a confirmed case? We contact the case, the, the person who <laughs> these are people who have illness. They're not, um, you know, nameless faces, and and we we just we talk to them, try to talk to them about their illness, how they're doing, how they're faring, and then we would begin speaking with them about their activities two days prior to their first symptom onset. So we'll ask them, when did you begin coughing? When did your fever begin? When did you begin experiencing shortness of breath or some other symptoms? And from that date and time and 48 hours prior to that date, we will go through a very detailed process of asking them, what happened after you got out of bed? What did you do for lunch? Where did you go? Who were you around? That, those sorts of things. And we will identify a list of, of people who were potentially contacting, not just people, but places as well. And once we have those identified, then our investigators will start contacting those places and those people to let them know that they were potentially exposed and that they need to be quarantined for two weeks. So you guys would have been the ones to notify the Walgreens that had to shut down for a Yeah, 
I'm not aware that the Walgreens was part of a confirmed case investigation, but um, if they had some credible threat that, that indicated a closure and a disinfection, then that's their, their right. <laughs> the question was, um, in the investigations, have any of these cases um, been at the beach? And I don't have any knowledge that that is true. Are you guys hearing about any shortages of personal protective equipment at the hospitals themselves? No. Yes. So the question is, do we hear anything about the shortage of personal protective equipment at the hospitals? And it's, it's just that they know that based on how much they're going through, that there could be a shortage. Uh, I think that right now they're, they're okay, but they predict that they, if they don't start getting some shipments in, that could be a challenge. But we're using some of our resources to find some per, uh, PPE to give to them, especially at these uh, off-site locations, or the uh, drive-through testing. And I would also say that, that we have tests, every hospital and the two clinics have test equipment. We are not in a situation where we're waiting on testing equipment to do test. It's here and we're testing, but it's by referral only. And you're not gonna see that change anytime in the near future. I'm not so sure that's not gonna be how it's going to be going forward because of the um, limited supply. They don't want to just test the general public, pu public and to satisfy your curiosity that maybe you do or don't have it. No. At this point, Tuscaloosa just announced a curfew, and he talks about doing that here. So uh, my comment about that would be um, that Tuscaloosa was in that six-county area, including Jefferson County, Shelby County, and all, uh, where they had an abundance of cases initially. Uh, Tuscaloosa and Auburn are a lot alike in that they, even though school is out, there's still a lot of students there. And I think that they are addressing an issue that we're not really addressing at this moment. Um, but I've actually had a conversation with uh, Walt Maddox yesterday about this very subject. But have you guys had discussions with your leadership team here about possibly a curfew? I've kicked it around. You know, if, if that is a step, then we'll be there. Say it went. Yes. My understanding, huh? It's just the fantasy. Yeah, at this time, it's only going. Uh, the question is, is where is the fantasy, and is there going to be another ship coming in? That's a moving target to John. We don't think that uh, there's another ship announced at this time, and the fantasy every now and then has to go out to sea. To I'm not sure what all they do, but I know it's necessary for them to leave the dock every so often. But I'll get that answer for you. We have time for about one or two more. Very good. Thank you very much.